Welcome to the Dressage Today podcast's Training Buzz. These short podcasts bring you the best tips straight from our subscription video site, Dressage Today On Demand. To get full access to all our videos, go to ondemand.dressagetoday.com and enter promo code DTPODCAST to save 15% off your subscription. Now, listen in on this week's buzz and enjoy the ride. Grand Prix trainer and competitor Lauren Spreiser talks about what she looks for in bridles and bits. Most importantly, she recommends having someone professionally examine the horse's mouth and head to determine what would be the best fit. Then she covers her preferences in bridles and bits that will help keep the horse comfortable. So I wanted to talk to you all a little bit today about equipment fitting, and certainly as a trainer, I have some thoughts on the type of equipment that I like to use and the brands of equipment that I like to use, but the most important part is that you find somebody who's really qualified to help you pick equipment that fits. Um, Someone that I use a lot is Stephanie Brown Beamer, who has done a video series for Dressage Today Online. You should check it out. Uh, So I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about equipment, specifically about bridles. I have with me here a snaffle bridle and a double bridle. And the most important part of any bridle is that it doesn't matter how much money you spend, it does not matter how highfalutin and fancy you have made your bridle if it doesn't fit your horse. If it doesn't fit your horse, it's irrelevant. So of course you wanna make sure that when you put your gear on, the uh, buckles are relatively in the middle of your options because then if your leather stretches, you can go up a hole if you put it on you know, as your, as your horse grows, if you have a young horse, you can put it down a hole. You want some flexibility. If all of your buckles are jammed up against either end, you're out of options. You also want to look for something that's comfortable. This particular bridle is from a company called Bridle to Fit. And what I look for in crown pieces is that there's sufficient padding and also a sufficient anatomical shape. You can see that this is cut. This is where his little ears go. I want a bridle that disperses the pressure of the equipment over as broad a surface area as possible without pinching anything. So again, this crown piece, it goes on like so with my little ears like this, Um, but this is still a fairly wide and well padded piece of leather. I feel the same way about nose bands myself. Um, That that a bigger, you know, the bigger, the, the broader the piece of leather, the more evenly pressure is divided and the less pressure there is per centimeter, I suppose, um, of pressure on the face. I tend to ride everything in a crank noseband, which is a word that sounds like, oh, crank, like that's a really mean, garish, inhumane word. It just refers to the mechanism by which the noseband closes. The reason that I like cranks as opposed to a more traditional cavison is that they're better padded. You can see that this guy is the chin piece on this particular cavison. This is like, I would go to sleep on this. This is delightful. Um, and so it's more comfortable for my, for my horse. Uh, with, a, with a traditional buckle cavison, that's a flat piece of leather. And that means that there isn't as much cushion. That's not as comfortable for my horse. Um, I also tend to ride things in a flash because I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, then we get into bits. Bidding is sort of this mystery world where you can really go on safari. Um, I work with some excellent bit fitting experts and we actually have one of them come and she brings her you know, suitcase of bits and we look at the horse's mouth and we look at the palate and we look at the way the teeth are put together and we look at the size of the tongue and how the tongue is attached. It's a fascinating lecture. She should give it to you all, not me. So check that out. But in the meantime, I can tell you that I like a double jointed snaffle on most horses. I find that it is more likely to lay flat against the horse's mouth than potentially nutcracker up into the top of the horse's mouth. I find most horses prefer that double jointed snaffle. Here is another one on this curb bit. Um, I also think about the ring of the bit. These ho- both of these horses happen to be in a loose ring configuration, but I have no problem using a more fixed ring like a D-ring or an egg butt. Um, Those bits tend to be a little bit more steady in the horse's mouth, really good for the horse who likes to hide behind the contact, not be as authoritative to the bridle, Um, really good for the horse that's very green. I always like to start in an egg butt type snaffle because you can always go up from there in terms of the power the bit has. 
this bridle here, this is Helio's double bridle, uh, we add in the curb bit. Lots and lots and lots of different shapes and styles of curb bit. What I think is really important to talk about is that your curb chain should not be so loose that you could use it as a hammock. Your curb chain should not be so loose that you can jump rope through it. If it's loose, there's a lot of play in the bit. You will end up looking like you're ripping your horse's face off when you touch the reins, even if you're not, which is bad from a visual perspective, but it also means that there's more movement, there's more unnecessary noise in your horse's mouth, which is bad from a practical perspective. We hope you enjoyed this bonus podcast. What would you like to learn about and what tips would you like to hear? Email me, Stephanie, at sruff at equinenetwork.com or reach out to us on social media. Remember, go to ondemand.dressagetoday.com and enter promo code DTPODCAST to save 15% off your subscription to our online catalog. Thanks for listening.